Hello, everybody. It is Wednesday, last Wednesday of the month, May 26th. I almost forgot what day it is. It is ready time for our Ask Me Anything, three o'clock in the afternoon, every Wednesday, right on this page. And Marie says, hi, Teresa, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Marie. Glad to have you here. Welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. We're almost into a holiday weekend. I know you probably have a few hundred things you wanna finish up, tie up some loose ends. Thank you for being here and listening so I can be of service to you. I'm Dr. Teresa. It was back in 1988. I can remember the day like it was yesterday when I bounced across that graduation stage at Ohio State University received my bachelor's degree in occupational therapy, worked diligently in that profession, and with my own personal level of excellence, acquired the doctoral degree in occupational therapy also. That's why they call me Dr. Teresa. Now, you may have heard already that the point came when, gee, I really wanted to do just the marketing and not the whole healthcare thing. That was about nine years ago. I've learned video production, search engine optimization, social media, and now paid traffic on Facebook and Instagram. That is my bailiwick. I am a go-to person for that. We've got some great questions for you today. Let's see where we're at here with the questions. We've got one uh, right here from Elijah. Thank you so much, Elijah, for your question. Elijah wants to know, how to increase email open rates. How to increase an email open rate. Great question, Elijah. Thank you so much for that. Elijah, we've got a great holiday coming up, Memorial Day. On the six major holidays of the year, send your entire list warm wishes for a good holiday. Stay away from the more personal holidays like Mother's Day or Father's Day, Valentine's Day. Halloween is definitely out. These are more personal holidays that people choose on a personal level to celebrate or not. The six major holidays of the year, New Year's, Memorial Day, 4th of July, Labor Day, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, people accept warm wishes for that and feel good that you thought of them. That will definitely wake up your email list. Now, here's the second thing to do, Elijah. The second thing to do is to send out an email to people and ask them, are they still interested in getting your emails? And give them the option to opt out. Tell them the unsubscribe button's below. My feelings won't be hurt. You know, if you'd like to stay in, I'd love to have you. So keep it a short, a short and simple. Those are two great ways to increase your email open rate. Thanks so much for your question, Elijah. I hope that was helpful. And I see Rita has joined us. Hi, Rita. Good to see you, my friend. Now, let me see here. Allison has a question. Allison wants to know, where is video view objective? Okay, Allison, you've probably heard me talk about this, that the video views are your go-to dollar a day ad strategy to see if your audiences like what you have or if they don't, if there's any interest. So let me share my screen with you. I'll show you. Ba -ba -ba. There we go, sharing the screen. This is the ads manager inside the the business account of Facebook. Okay, just to back up here for a moment, your business page on Facebook, imagine it is a big plot of land, big pile of dirt, land and dirt. And on that land of dirt, you need a foundation to build a building. That foundation is your business account with Facebook. Go to business.facebook.com and you can set up your business account there. It will be the same logins as your personal Facebook account. Facebook will not allow it to be separate. So once you have your foundation, which is your business Facebook account, 
Now you're ready to build a gorgeous building on that beautiful big plot of land. And that building is gonna house some special rooms like your kitchen. The kitchen is a creative center in a home. Just like the ads manager is the creative center for your business account. So think of this ads manager as the kitchen where you create your ads. Inside that kitchen, you've got this green create button. To get to that video view, to bake up and serve some video view ads, you're gonna hit that green create button. This new pop-up is gonna come up and Facebook will ask you, what is the objective of your ad? Now, I remember when I first started this, I would stare at this for at least 20, 25 minutes, maybe, maybe 30, and think to myself, well, what does this mean? What does that mean? What does it think? Now, right here, right here in the middle of everything is your video view ad. So, Allison, I'm really grateful you asked this question because I know I spent hours staring at this stuff and debating. I'm here to serve and give you the answers that you need to be productive and successful. Right there is your video view, bonsai, video views, and you can continue. That, my friend, is where you find your video view ad. I hope that was helpful. If you need any other information, Allison, you just give me a shout. Okay, what else do we have here? We have got a question from Alyssa. Alyssa, my friend. Okay. I'm, this question's got, I wanna make sure I understand your question, Alyssa. The question is hooks, what are they? Hmm, so I'm guessing, Alyssa, you've heard me speak about hooks. In the marketing world for advertising, a hook is the reason someone would become interested in your product or service. It's their pain point, if you will. Now, there's several ways you can craft a hook. First of all, you do need to know your audience. What are their pain points? Why would your product make a difference in their life? And it's not enough to say, I have a great deal today. It's not enough to say, it's fantastic. Mine's better than everybody else's. It's not about the product. It's about what it does for the buyer's life. What, so what problem or pain is it solving? So a hook, if you will, is the reason their solution, the reason their pain will go away after they have your product. So let's say, for example, um, you have a waterproof lighter. It's very novel. It will make a huge difference in a camper's day because they will always be able to light a fire even if their lighter gets wet or if it's raining or if it's damp out or if the wood's damp, that lighter is going to work. It's a novel approach. And now that pain point of the camper is not having a lighter that will work when they need it to has been solved. You might have a hook like, it's so much faster, easier and better. For example, laundry detergent usually comes in these great big huge jugs or those little pods right now the pods do solve the problem of measuring out the liquid because you know you're measuring out that liquid you're not really sure how much goes in there or not goes in there the pods though if you calculate it out can be pretty pricey so for someone that is on a tight budget, they may not be able to go, to go they, they may not be able to afford the pods. Enter a strip of laundry detergent that is perforated that you can tear off a piece of the laundry detergent, throw it into the wash machine and it dissolves in the wash machine. 
A, it's novel, but B, and this is what's most important, it solves the problem. You don't have to measure anything. So your life is already easier that way. It's faster to get your laundry done because all you do is tear off a sheet. And three, it's less expensive than a pod. What is the solution that you're solving? What about the status that your product will give somebody? If someone's driving a Lexus, they have more social status because we are car aficionados in America over someone who's driving a Honda. What is the status it'll give them? Think about, um, I remember as a young girl, mom received a cashmere sweater from dad for Christmas. <laughs> she burst out and she said, well, won't I look like a rich woman in the neighborhood? She thought by wearing the cashmere sweater, her status would change. Maybe that's how bad, maybe that's why dad bought the cashmere sweater. I don't know. But think about the status. And what's tied into that innately is the feeling somebody will have because they have your product or service. For example, I recently bought something called a Berkey water filter. These water filters are not cheap. They are top of the line. I bought it because the feeling I have and knowing it's secure and stable and reliably will filter my everyday drinking water. I feel very good about my Berkey water filter. Now, I have no affiliation with them, but it's the feeling that I have. So those are a few different types of hooks you can use, Alyssa. There's a few other ones like, um, well, I go into this a lot in some of my marketing classes. Um, but Alyssa, I think that'll give you a good start on your hooks. And I appreciate the question. Let me know how you do with that. So moving along here and speaking of courses, I'll be having a storyteller course coming up soon. If you wanna know more about storytelling, put something in the comments, tell me, yes, I wanna know more about storytelling. I'll be having that class coming up probably next week. Um, I'm thinking Thursday next week, but let me know if that works for you also. Okay, so now here we have e-commerce, question from Fred. Fred would like to know, what does he need to do right now to prepare for the holiday? Fred, you're a very, 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 very wise man. This is the end of May. Preparing for the holiday season for e-commerce should be a thousand percent your focus right now. Start to test your offers. Use these next three summer months of June, July, and August See if a discount gets more purchases or if you start to bundle products together, if that gives you more purchases. See if you have a coupon instead of a BOGO. Think of different ways people want to buy your product. Intensely look at your numbers from last year. What worked, what didn't work, what do you need to change? Because September 1st, people are buying already for the holiday season. E-commerce launches September 1st, goes straight through October and November, and those first two weeks of December, it dies down. So if you are in e-commerce, the next three months, get your offers ready. And if you've not done it already, build your email list. Give something away, like a lead magnet, information product about you, your company, whatever it is that you're selling, get email addresses. Why? 40% of e-commerce sales 
are through email. 40% build that email list. It's critical for an e-commerce business. So Fred, I hope that was helpful. Um, oh, quick other thought. You might wanna collect some testimonials. If you don't already have them, make sure you have your testimonial review process set up and working. And also, oh, this is, here's the business sense of me coming out. Check your supplier, especially with this past year that we've all seen suppliers take a hit. Make sure you have enough supply coming in for your sales so you have a successful holiday season. Fred, great question. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Now, the next question we have is from Lewis, and Lewis wants to know, oh, he's excited about doing some joint ventures. I've been talking about joint ventures and he wants to know for a joint venture, what's, what's, what, what, how do you know if the joint, what is a good joint venture partner questionnaire? Well, it's a really simple one, Lewis. First of all, you need to complement each other or have the same audiences and you wanna help each other build. So let's say, for example, I'm in marketing. I would have a great joint venture with somebody else that is in marketing like let's say an email marketer. I would have a great way of partnering up with them and making an offer like my storytelling course to their list. And then he could make an offer to my list for his email marketing class. That's an example of a joint venture. Another thing to look for is the size of their social media standing. And this might sound a little snobby. So I don't mean it to, honestly. Look and see if they have a following. This is very important because you want somebody with an active following. You want someone who's active on social media. Since the beginning of this year, when I started looking at joint ventures for myself, I really held my feet to the fire to be more active online. That's one of the reasons I do these ask me anything. So other criteria you might wanna consider for a joint venture partner is, is there something there that you could offer that complements what they're doing? Like for example, I have this storytelling class coming up. I could go to someone with a group of business owners and say, I have a storytelling class. Would your followers enjoy that. And in return, from a business perspective, they may have a great time management tool that I could share with my list. See how it complements each other? So Lewis, I hope that gave you some great ideas. Matter of fact, there's a strategic alliance, a joint venture conference coming up. And you might, you might really enjoy this, Lewis. It's called Strategic Alliance Live. And I'd like to extend an invitation to everybody to come. They're having a free seminar this week, a free influence challenge, where you can kind of get a feel for what the live event's going to be like. So what I can do, um, let me see here. I've got um, two links I can put in there for you. The first link I'll put in there is for the, the influence challenge, which is this week. And that is free. The influence challenge is this week. Now, if you want to go to the actual... Strategic Alliance Live, which I highly suggest and recommend. It's June 9th through the 11th. Let me put this in here. It is June 9th through the 11th, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It was a game changer for me when I attended this in January. You will meet people of all different business backgrounds, all different types of industries, and they're all interested. The reason they are there is to find joint venture partners. You have the people they can swap lead magnets with, people they can help build, grow their email list. Maybe they have a course or offering that they want to help affiliates sell that course or offering. Joint ventures are truly the way to go when it comes to building your business. I've seen a lot of great things come out of this particular Organization Strategic Alliance. And it's going to be live June 9th, 10th, and 11th. So hop onto that bit.ly link that I put there in the comments. 
register. They've got a great deal. It's only $97 if you pay up front. But if you're really not sure and you want to go through the process first, spend the three days with them. They're happy to have you come for free for three days. And then you pay $147 afterwards. So your choice, 97 before or 147 afterwards. But tell you what, I'm paying the 97 without a problem because I know the value that's in there. If you want to know the value that's in there, jump in on that influence challenge they're having this week. It's only Wednesday, We've got two more days. It'll give you a good feel for the value that's being created. And then mark your calendar for June 9th, 10th and 11th, pay the $97 and get into some joint ventures. Yeah, I see Rita's joined us. Hi, Rita. Thank you so much. Oh, she's excited about the storyteller class. Yay. Let me know if uh, next Thursday works for you. And uh, I'm really leaning into that time frame. And yes, joint ventures, Rita says, really grow your business. They do. They do. I've, I've met some fantastic people. I've done a lot of interview swaps. I've been online more in the past five months because of one event I went to in January than I was on all of last year. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Very exciting. That was our last question of the day. Unless somebody else has something in the comments that they'd like to ask, let me know. Do share. Oh, I didn't ask you to share this. There must be somebody you know out there that this information would help. Feel free to hit the share button and hit the like button. Hit that share button and share this with your news feed, because this is something that you know, there's somebody listening to it that it can help. As they say, share your time, talents and treasures. Thank you everybody for coming today. Thank you so much for being here, Dottie, Rita. Oh, Dottie has a question. Can I share how storytelling helps in marketing? Oh, sure, Dottie, happy to do that. Okay, storytelling is it's an off way, it's kind of like an off way to just create it. Okay, let me back up, backing up. Let business is done when people know, like, and trust the person who's offering the product or service. Building that relationship with them is key. When you're sending a lead magnet over to somebody through the computer, and then you send them a follow-up email, making sure, of course, that they know how to use the lead magnet and that they whitelisted your email address, but send them another email and tell them your story. Tell them why you are passionate about what you do. What was the defining moment in your life that gave you that light bulb idea and pulled you from one step to the next step to the next step to bring you into the business you're in now. Why do you sell that product? Why do you provide that service? Tell them that story. Sending that in an email after someone gets your lead magnet humanizes you. It starts to gel the relationship and create a bond between you and the person that downloaded the lead magnet. They start to understand who you are and become more comfortable in doing business with you. My story does include my history as a healthcare provider in occupational therapy. This has opened up the door for me for dentists to be comfortable working with me, for functional medicine doctors to be comfortable working with me for doctoral level pharmacists to be comfortable with me because I have a healthcare background. What in your background would open up some doors for you? Tell that in your story. Put your story on your website. The key to telling a good story is doing it in three minutes or less. Three minutes or less. Honing that is something I'm going to help you with in my upcoming storytelling class. If you could tell your story in three minutes or less, put it on video. Use that video on your social media. 
feel free to use it as part of your website. You could have it on a video. You could have it written out. The story is what builds the bond and builds the relationship so that people know, like, and trust you and understand who you are. And it just exponentially grows your relationship with the person on the other side of that computer. Now, if you're in e-commerce, you might be scratching your head and saying, I don't think they really care. Yes, they do. Tell the story of how that business started. Get some pictures pulled together of each individual that works in your business. Tell that person's story too. Tell the story of the person that puts everything in a box and ships it out. Tell the story of who hand writes the thank you notes that go out. Maybe it's you that does that. Matter of fact, that's a really good marketing tip to hand write your thank you notes. Your story will en enliven your existence and take it 10 times to where you're standing now because it creates a vision and an image of who you are in your buyer's mind, in your prospect's mind. Storytelling should be part of your toolbox for marketing for that reason alone. So be sure to watch this page and tell me if you do want to know more about storytelling, go ahead and say yes in the comments below. And I see Dottie said she's shared the, oh, thank you for sharing this, Dottie. I appreciate that. I was just on Dottie's wonderful show. She's got a fantastic business group, Business Divas. Check out that Business Divas group. And uh, she said next Thursday works good for her. Fantastic. I hope that answered your question, Dottie, for how to use story to help you with your marketing. I want to thank everybody for being here today. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Be safe this holiday weekend. And thank you to our veterans and current soldiers that are serving. Thank you to their families. May you find peace on this holiday. Happy Memorial Day, everybody.